Wow. Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Hey, I hope you're doing well. My name is Mitch May. We're learning to cook with Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. We're making a f***ing beef tongue today. Veal tongue with Madeira. I couldn't find veal, and I'm not crazy about the ethics of veal. And that's not an issue. It's not like there's a whole freaking section in this book that goes after veal. We'll get there when we come there, but the section we're in right now, blood and guts. These are all the nasty bits Bourdain says that chefs get, and I quote, misty-eyed about. And he also says this is an issue with a lot of American cuisine. We just go after hamburgers. And the reality is across the world, people eat beef tongue as if we do burgers. I do have beef tongue and we're gonna use Madeira, which is a Portuguese wine and make a sauce with that. So let's break it down. It's like, I'm not gonna break it down. I'm just gonna jump straight into the recipe. The ingredients are gonna be down below in the description. I have ADD. If you want to still see the ingredients in the beginning, fire away, send me feedback. We have our beef tongue. Today's video is actually sponsored by Wild Fork. If you're in, just kidding. Let's crack this open and I'm actually gonna bring the camera over there and uh, let's do this thing. Quality, pla quality plastic, woo, woo. Oh my, yeah, that's a tongue right there. I've never touched anything. That is a rough, that is so rough. It's really alien-like, not gonna lie. But you know, it does kind of just feel like a hunk of meat. There's a, whew, I'm feeling a weird, weird tendon thing going on right there. That's interesting. Let's get a close up of it. There's the tip of the tongue. Some nice texture there. We're gonna simmer this thing. Place the tongue in the large pot and cover with water so that the water comes at least three inches above the tongue. Simmer and cook for one hour and 15 minutes. Interesting with that. It seems much like with Bourdain stocks, we're kind of bringing out the impurities because there's scummy stuff rising to the top. We're going to prep up our vegetables. Kind of cool. I had an onion chilling in the fridge. Waste nothing and use this. That was so cheesy, I'm sorry. But seriously, you know, the idea is to one day be able to just look in my fridge and be like, bang, bang, let's make something delicious. Thinly sliced, I go right down the middle, give it a swift chop chop. All right, very nice, cool little pro tip. I've been using a bench scraper. I used to bake a ton. This is very convenient to gather everything up and transfer it over. Lovely leeks, just the white part. If you remember leeks from Vichyssoise and actually the first freaking recipe in this book, where is it? A leek looks more like this. We don't use any of this crap. It can be used for stocks, compost, and I'm actually gonna be using it later on for something special. But we gotta thinly slice this. It's gonna go down the middle, give us a flat surface, and chop, chop. This is when I vibe, man, when we can like simmer something off over on the stove and also gather our prep. It's kind of nice to be able to be doing multiple things at once, but also like not have it require all of your attention. All right, that looks good to me. One small freaking carrot. This is organic for whatever that means. Gonna give myself a flat surface. You know what? No, straight down the middle. Mm, that's much better. Get this over. Bay leaf, parsley, thyme. This is Thomas Keller's version of bouquet garni. He ingeniously uses leek leaves to encase the lovely herbs that we're gonna be using. I may or may not live near a train. Parsley, smack that bad boy in there. Bay leaf, thyme, goes in there. Thomas Keller, you freaking god. It's like a cute little package now, man. That is so neat, that is so neat. That ain't going anywhere. This is just like a little baton of flavor boostage. All the prep is knocked out. Yes, all the prep is knocked out. So I'll catch you back in an hour and 10 minutes. We have returned. The liquid in there is reminiscent of a swamp. Do, do, da, lingua. You know, it's unique for sure. What we have to do now is take off the, the, the skin-ish squirrel, the skin stuff. Bourdain says to let this cool. However, I saw that you should kind of attack it as soon as you can handle it. Don't know where to begin. Don't know where to begin. Let's just give a sliss down here. Wow, that is tough stuff. All right, not the easiest to rip off, that's for sure. Hmm. I do not know where to begin here. There we go, progress. Just comes right off like that, wow, that is, woo. 
peels right off. This is a great time to mention our comment of the week. <laughs> Malik Peters. Sorry, I said your name wrong. It's Make or Mike. He recommended I use a mortar and pestle. I don't think I can use it on this tongue, but in the future for using like coarse ground pepper and stuff, I think that would be extremely helpful. You know what? As I'm doing my best impersonation of Hannibal Lecter, I have to say this is kind of fun. I don't know why. I feel kind of bad. I butchered it a little bit. Some parts kind of just peeled off like a orange and other parts they're stuck on there like tongue skin. And maybe you can help me out here. All of this material here, I don't know if that's edible. See how the tongue and then there's all this stuff. So I'm going to get in there with my knife and just shave it away, sort of feeling where I need to go. Letting the knife blade tell me what's good. Now that is... <laughs> unmistakable <laughs> for, for a tongue. Oh, jeez. This, I think I'm gonna just throw to the raccoons. They're gonna have a good old time with that. And I'll even just knock off. No, you know what? I'm gonna leave it there. I'm playing with my food. I'm doing too much. Over to our pot. Heat two tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat, and when it's hot, add the onion and the leek. Cook, stirring occasionally until they're golden brown. Then add the carrot and cook for another two minutes. Stir in one tablespoon of flour, cook for two more minutes, I always wonder what this does, the flour. To me, it kind of gives an excuse to burn something, but I think the idea is to build a bit of a nice fond, build up some depth of flavor, then stir in one cup of the Madeira and one tablespoon of the sherry vinegar. Add the stock, the bouquet garni, and the tongue to the pot. I have a hunch is not nearly enough stock. More than half the tongue is leaching out of the top. I like that a little more. Bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer, and season with salt and pepper. Cover and allow to simmer over low heat for one and a half hours or until the tongue is tender. That's gonna do its thing and we will come back to it. I'm gonna clean up all this stuff. All right, we're coming down to the wire. Unfortunately, it's only been in about an hour. My pops is gonna be home to cook dinner for everyone else. Time management just isn't one of my strong suits. A great trait for a cook. I heard when a fork goes in, it is tender. Some resistance there, definitely some resistance. The back end is actually quite tender. Oh gosh. There we go. Sauce, baby strainer, in we go. Not gonna lie, if I had an immersion blender, I would probably go to town on this, just blend it all up in there and add the remaining Madeira and vinegar. The magical demi-glass, which we have made, it is liquid. It is not liquid, clearly, it is solid goodness. The sauce is reducing. We are coming to the home stretch. If you're into these kinds of videos, hit the like button. I refuse to be that kind of YouTuber. If you like these videos, if you like Bourdain, if you like what we're about here, join our crew. Let's plate this thing. Pretty, pretty tender. Phone died when I had the first bite, but it's kind of like dark meat turkey. It's a little spongy, texture's a little strange, but it's tender. And I mean, the sauce is really good. Would I eat this again? Tough one, it's kind of, the texture's a little off to me. The potatoes, I made them because they look fancy, but they've been sitting for two hours and they're stale and weird. Still tastes good though. If it were to go after this again, I think it's gotta cook longer to get the skin off easier. We just made beef tongue. Thank you for spending your time with me. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.